What's going on, everybody? It is February 24th, Saturday slate. We've got a sort of split slate. Um, seven games if you're playing on DK, but the main slate is actually only six on FanDuel. For some reason, FanDuel's dropping off the early game and the late game, which is a shame because Kings Lakers could have been interesting, but I'm all for concentrating the games, making it easier. Um... Nothing crazy last night. Ended up down probably 15% or so. Uh, no crazy lineups. Nothing awesome. Shout out uh, to the call of AD scoring 100 last night. If you saw that in the live chat during the live stream, you probably woke up, saw AD, or watched it last night, saw AD get 96 or whatever it was, and thought, holy shit, that dude in uh, Josh's live stream was spot on wish i would have had more of him i know he had him fully so congrats there uh other than that let's just dive in we've got uh i've got liverpool starting in seven minutes so i'm running late kind of disappointed about that but what are you gonna do we're gonna smash them first game up um i'm not looking at the early game uh, obviously i will touch on the kings lakers game for the dk peeps uh first game up is heat hosting the grizzlies um, Heat with a 101.25 implied total is 12th. They are 8.5 point favorites at home against the Grizz. This is a slog of a game for fantasy purposes. Grizzlies projected for 93.75 is comically low. Um, fantasy points are going to be at a premium here. Uh, not a great spot for value. I will start with uh, Josh Richardson though. 5,500. Um, I liked him last night. He had a really good game. Uh, he's just too low for that price. He should be like 6'1", 6'2", somewhere in that neighborhood. So uh, I'm just going to say that he's a 3 straight up. <clears throat> uh, Drogic, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. You know, you're looking 33 or so. Had 55 last night. Couple games uh, in that area. I'm fine with going 3, but... It's close, just because there's not a ton of upside in the price. This is a tough game to, to think people are just going to go crazy in. Whiteside at 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. He's probably a four. Um, got 33 minutes last night, which is awesome. I'd be interested to see if that continues. You know, he got to value at that 7,500 price. But again, um, in this slowed down, offensive, challenged game, uh, it's hard to get super excited about anything. I don't have a ton of interest in Wayne or Tyler Johnson. I guess Wade is probably a four. Um, there's not much to like super like. I assume that Olenek is going to play. And if he does, that sort of neuters the James Johnson, bam, type plays. But really, you just don't want that game. Particularly the Memphis portion, 93.75 implied total. Dead last by a mile. Uh, this is just... Memphis, they shouldn't even have to travel to Miami. If Miami wasn't so nice, they should just be able to be like, you know what, we'll just give you this one. Rest out. Uh, Dylan Brooks is 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. He had 18 last night. Um, I don't really have much interest in him there. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in Andrew Harrison, but at the very least, I'll say that he's a four. It's just an opportunity thing. Uh, Mark Gasol, 7,600, so you're looking for 38. Uh, I can't imagine it. Um... Jamichael Green is probably the only other portion of this game that I'd be okay with. I'd be, you know, he can be a four, but you just you don't want this game unless there's injury news where a bunch of these guys drop off. Um, this is not the spot to put your money. Uh, Knicks hosting the Celtics. One hundred one point two five implied total for the Knicks. They are four and a half point underdogs at home. Uh, 12th highest implied total, same as the Heat. Knicks in a similar situation to the Heat here in that uh, 
it's not a great spot. Um, Boston good defensively. So we want to temper our enthusiasm here a bit. First up is Tim Hardaway Jr. 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Um... I mean, if you think the shots go in, you know, he needs 32. He said 40 in his past two, but he could just as easily go three for 19 tonight. Um, I'll say that he's a four just because of his opportunities, but he's a GPP play only. Big Beast, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Uh, on paper, it's hard to ignore him. Um, he's probably going to get a couple less minutes. At least that's the way that it's trending. But he's still a guy that guns, and I would expect him to gun, particularly in a home game. Um, I don't think that you can assume that Trey Burke is going to take 18 shots a game or whatever he did in the last one. So I'm comfortable going back to the well for Beasley, but only in a limited amount. I, this is a terrible matchup. Uh, Frankie Smokes, I'm not like crazy enthused about but I'll say that he's a four I don't know how I pasted that in there but it didn't go well oh yeah that's a formula I forgot there we go um you know you want to see him get minutes but I don't know what the Knicks are doing if your goal is if you're going to trade for Moody A and draft Frank Nilakina. Why are you giving Trey Burke 30 minutes? Anybody in the league could have had Trey Burke, and most people were like, nah, I'm good. It's weird. Moutier, 4,400 on FanDuel, uh, 4,700 on DK. Uh, love it again. Uh, I will happily go back to this well. Um, Again, love it is a relative term for this particular game because of Boston, but I'm going to say that Moutier is a 3 on FanDuel for me and a 4 on uh, DK. Uh, he's 4,400 FanDuel, 47 on DK. That's a, a dramatic swing in price. I'm expecting less minutes for Cantor, uh, so that makes me a little apprehensive about him. I'm going to say that he is just a 4, and that's only on FanDuel. Same for Courtney Lee. I think his minutes are going to get neutered, um, so that's going to be it. And if Trey Burke is going to play 24 minutes, he's at least worth a random flyer in GPPs. Basically, all I can say there. Let's go to Boston, another team I hate playing. These first four games or first first four teams are just not things that I give a shit about in fantasy. I hate Boston as a DFS team. I like them as a real basketball team, but they are, uh, they're just not interesting. What is this sorted by? Not oh, minutes, okay. So Boston 105.75 implied total is ninth, four and a half point favorites. Uh, they're on the back to back on the road side, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, first up is Kyrie, 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Um, I actually like him a lot on FanDuel. I don't get the sense that he's going to have a, a hard time with Moutier or Trey Burke. Um, Nilakina good on D, but, you know, Kyrie's been around the block. He's not going to be worried about a rookie point guard. Uh, so I'm going to say that Kyrie's a three on FanDuel, and I wouldn't touch him at all on DK. That's a ludicrous price. Hopefully Kyrie just wants to go off in uh, MSG. Now, Jalen Brown, 5,600 on both sites. It's just a four for me. Horford, 6,800. Now, that interests me. Needs 35. Well, 34. It's been quiet lately. This feels like a spot where he could break out. You know, Nick's not exactly uh, amazing defensively. Um, you know, Cantor, not a defensive worry. This could be a decent spot for Al Horford. I'm going to say that he's a three. <sighs> kind of a fan there for some reason. Jason Tatum's a four. Can't get those guys right. 
And I don't want any part of Marcus Smart or Marcus Morris or... Well, Marcus Morris, 4,800. Um, I could, I'm comfortable saying he's a four. Now let's get to the real games. Golden State Warriors <clears throat> hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Warriors 121.25 implied total. By far the biggest one on the slate. Uh, by, what, seven points? They are nine-point favorites at home against the Thunder. Um, I don't have to tell anybody how big of a game this is from a basketball perspective. This is a monster. I love that I said I don't have to tell anybody how big it is and then immediately told everybody how big it is. <laughs> Fucking stupid. All right, let's grab the, let's grab the big guns. Drop them in. So Durant, 10-3 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. <sighs> Against his Thunder brethren, no Roberson. So let's do this. NBA.com. When's the last time they played? Why is Brandon Ingram at the top? Am I in a in the wrong thing. What are these salaries? I can't deal with this right now. <laughs> All right, Durant. It's like they're adding them together. Is Brandon Ingram like 7,200 or 7,300 or something? Anyway, not important. So last time they played was February 6th. So let's find that game. And it's a new feature on NBA.com that I'm super interested in. I might not have gone to the right spot. February 6th. Thunder Warriors. We want the box score. Why am I? No, this isn't where I want to be. Ah. <sighs> There it is. That's what we want. Okay, now we want scores. Now we want the sixth. So this NBA.com now has individual box score stats for defensive metrics. So what I can do is come here, pick Kevin Durant, and see who was guarding him. So he had 32 possessions of Paul George and 12 possessions of Josh Hustis. So they, they were rotating a bunch of people on him. Um, I assume Roberson was already out. Yeah, okay, so that's good to know. So Durant is going to get the bulk of the time on Paul George, which makes me a little nervous. So while I like Durant, I don't want to go too crazy. I'm going to say that he is a three. Draymond had a big chunk of Patrick Patterson, a big chunk of Mello, and a big chunk of Jeremy Grant. Patterson held Draymond in check. So did Mello. So did Jeremy Grant. 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. I kind of like Draymond tonight. I'm going to say he's a three as well. Let's see who had Clay. Clay was Hustis, Paul George, and Grant. Okay, so that's what they're doing. Interesting. Nothing really from Clay from any real interest. Um, he's 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. I think I like Clay a lot tonight. I wish he got to the line more. But Steph at 9,500 on FanDuel, 9,900 on DK. This is going to be mostly all, yeah, so just almost only Russ. One of five, like he got five threes off, two of seven from the field. 
I like Curry tonight. I'm going to say that Curry is a two. And I know that's usually like kind of a big thing for me. Well, let me be more specific. He's a two on FanDuel. He's a three on DraftKings. Um, he's coming off the big game, 68 fantasy points uh, two nights ago. So he's rested. He's at home. You know, they're looking for revenge. He's got the best matchup out of uh, the four guys on, you know, the, the, bi the four bigger guys on the squad. Um, Iguodala is a four, by the way. GPP only. Uh, I really like that idea for Curry, especially if he's going to have that much Russ. Um, I don't get the sense that Russ held him to one for five, three. I think that's just three point variation. Um, and I'm willing to, I'm willing to take my bets on, on, uh, on Curry tonight. Let's check out OKC. 112.25 implied total is fourth. Um, and like I said, nine point underdogs on the road. Let's grab these main guys. I'm going to include Jeremy Grant for right now. So, Paul George. He was split between Durant and Clay. Um, yeah, he kind of he kind of went at Clay. But the team was very successful in both of those spots. He was a little hot from 3. Okay. 8,800 on FanDuel, 9,300 on DK, which is just insane. You know, you're looking for 45. Been there pretty regularly, you know, had 50 two nights ago. Um, I'm going to say that he's a three on FanDuel, though, and uh, a four on DK. I don't really like this particular matchup on this particular day. Russ, though, 11-2 on FanDuel, 11-6 on DK. Uh, I think we're going to be smashing some Russell Westbrook tonight. He had clay for most of the game. Uh, that went very well for the Thunder. He was 5 of 9 from the field. Um, yeah, they've tried a lot of different stuff for Russ. Didn't really matter one way or the other. Yeah, I think Russ is a two as well. And that's on FanDuel only. That 11-6 price tag on DraftKings is bonkers. But I will say he's a three because I like him. Steven Adams. Yeah, DraftKings pricing for the Thunder is rough. Adams is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. It's a good matchup. Uh, Warriors not the best against uh, centers. Had a lot of Zaza, a lot of David West. He kind of abused Zaza. I don't think they're going to be playing Zaza as much, so it makes me interested to see what they're going to do there. I'm going to say Adams is a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. I should have pasted this shit twice. Mello. Who's guarding Mello? Oh, yeah, I remember that game. 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. So you need him to get to, like, 28. Um, hasn't been the best in the last two, but definitely has the ability to get there. Uh, that pricing is kind of nuts. I like Mellow a lot. I'm going to have a lot of this game. I'm probably not in the minority. And uh, Jeremy Grant, I'm just going to say, is a straight four. And I can delete that. That's a good game, obviously, in, like, multiple ways. But, yeah, I highly recommend checking um, checking out these matchup box scores. You can really help dig in to see who's guarding who. I don't remember how to get there naturally, but if you Google, I don't know, something else that I Googled that doesn't make this come up now for some strange reason. NBA box score, new. It, they just rolled them out fairly recently, but they have the whole season's worth. Let's go to Minnesota now. Pour one out a little bit for Jimmy Butler. Um, I haven't seen any news yet that's official. 
Uh, he's getting the MRI today. Um, didn't look good. Uh, the clip I saw on House of Highlights, you know, said it's he he was saying it was torn. So, but it could be end of the could be the end of Jimmy Butler for the year, which would mean that's the end of Minnesota being anything exciting. But what it does mean is that we get to uh, smash B Jelly pretty heavily. You guys are going to get to see something we don't see all that often. So let's start with it here. 113.75 implied total from Minnesota. They are 8.5 point favorites against the Bulls. Bummer for Jimmy Butler not getting a chance to uh, slay his shitty former team. But alas, here we are. Wiggins, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Uh, he was significantly better when uh, Jimmy Butler missed time earlier. Or at least that's how I remember it. Um, let's double check that just to see. X-rays negative. Yeah, I, I don't. They're probably not going to see that he tore his ACL or something from an X-ray. So, okay. So when Jimmy Butler did not play, where's he at? Wiggins averaged, you know, two and a half points more per fan or per game than uh, when he did. His average was 31, which is basically right on his uh, on his number. So it's going to be a lot to like here, especially because Chicago is terrible. So Wiggins is going to be a two. Um, Jeff Teague is going to be a three. I like him, but you know it is a Chris Dunn revenge game too, and he is legitimately a, a solid defender. So I don't want to go too crazy on Teague. The person I'm going to go crazy on. Nemanja Bielica, B Jelly, 3,500 on FanDuel, 3,400 on DK. I have him projected for 28 points at a minimum salary on FanDuel. He played incredibly well um, when he was hurt earlier. Averaged 24 fantasy points in games that Jimmy Butler did not play, which would be uh, more than okay. Uh, that's going to be like 6 or 7x in value. B Jelly gets the elusive first tier that's how you got to get it guys uh b jelly should be slammed hard tonight almost essential in cash taj gibson is 5900 on FanDuel, 5900 on dk um i don't think that this situation necessarily benefits is benefits taj in any real way um i'm gonna say that he is just simply a four Towns, when Butler was out, was actually uh, significantly worse, which is interesting to me. 9,700 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. Um, not the best game last night. I know he was in the, the smash spot that everybody liked, but uh, he was quiet against the Rockets, so I'm going to say that he's just a three. Jamal Crawford should play about 26 minutes. That's what I have him here for. And uh, with Butler out... He averaged 27 a game without Butler, which is a monster number. Um, he's uh, a straight two. Minnesota is by far the team to pay attention to today. Bulls are terrible, um, and there is an immense amount of value on the Wolves. Shit. I forgot Liverpool was on. Did anything good happen? It's 10-16 for me right now. Still nothing, nothing. I'll catch the second half. Okay. Um, to the Bulls. <sighs> Bulls 105.25 implied total is 10th. Uh, not very good. But they do get a shot at a team that should be uh, reeling a little bit. Let's take a look at the Wolves quickly. I want to see how much Jimmy Butler affects their defensive rate. So as a team... The Bulls have a 110.4, or the, yeah, the Bulls. The, the Wolves have a 110.4 defensive rating, just in general. I'd like to see what it is when Jimmy Butler is off the floor. They are 27th percentile in defense, 88th in offense. They drop to dead last. First percentile defense when Jimmy Butler is not on the floor. 
that's crazy. That's 1,700 possessions. That is not a small amount of time. Um, wow, that's that's really... They, they play at a minus 9 when Jimmy Butler's not on the floor. Now, in a way, that makes sense. Um, Tibbs, the way that Tibbs handles rotations, I mean, all these guys play 35-plus minutes, and they play a lot of those minutes together. So it is a little skewed in that um, you don't necessarily see it in a, in a normal blend. But either way, this is really bad. So something to keep in mind that the Bulls side of this is sneakily better than it, it seems. That's how much of a, that's how much weight Jimmy Butler carries. Um, so I'm willing to go all the way down to Denzel Valentine. So let's dump that in there. So David Nwaba is 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Uh, gets to the rim a lot for someone that's um, not like a center, which is kind of crazy. He needs 25. He put up 39 two nights ago. Feels like a little bit of a chase, but I'm comfortable saying he's a three. He's still just David Nwaba. He wasn't good enough to stay on the Lakers, so you can't get too crazy. Uh, this should be a good spot for Markin in 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. He would need 30. He's been a little quiet lately, but I think this is the type of game that could really um, open him up. I'm going to say that he's a three as well. Uh, the guy that everybody will be paying attention to will be Zach Levine um, coming back to Minnesota. 7,200 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. So you're looking 35. Um, I mean, he's going to gun it. That's for damn sure. Uh, I, I think he's just a three, though. But looks like a great uh, spot for a GPP. Bobby Portis. 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. He put up 49 uh, two nights ago. He needs 35. Um, this is another great spot for him. Uh, I'm actually going to say that he is a straight two. I really like Portis in this situation. It's a little similar for Chris Dunn. Uh, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Um needs 30. I'm a little nervous about him coming back and still getting his bearings, so I'm going to say he's a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. That price on DK is not optimal. And Denzel Valentine is just a straight 4 for me. Uh, Minnesota does give up a bunch of corner 3s, and that's sort of Denzel Valentine's specialty, so he has a chance to be an interesting GPP guy. It's a lot of time on Minnesota and the Bulls, but so much news. Let's go to Phoenix. Suns, um, 107 implied total is 7th. They're 7-point underdogs at home against the Blazers. Um, Booker underperformed last night. Peyton, uh, you know, underperformed a little bit last night. TJ Warren was great. Alex Len was great. Uh, if you had Josh Jackson, you were probably tolerant of that uh bender didn't crash which is good uh, all in all it was just a, a weird game to be a part of shout out to shaq harrison making his debut um so let's just grab this stack of guys since we're gonna have them all in some way devin booker is 7700 on fanduel 7400 on dk um, so he needs 38. I know it's a back-to-back, -back, but they're at home here. Um, I think this could be a nice little coming-out party game for Booker. I watched the first five minutes of that Suns game last night, and sweet sassy molassy, it was dog shit. It was turnover over turnover. I watched TJ Warren miss, like, two layups. No one did anything of value. It was disgusting. It was like 15 bonk a couple minutes in. Just bad. Booker's a three. Alfred Payton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Um, I like him here as well. 
Uh, Portland limits the threes, which is kind of good because Alfred Payton can't shoot. So this could be a decent spot for Alfred Payton. He's got Lillard on the opposite side of him. Let's say he's a three. TJ Warren, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. He is uh, criminally underpriced, I think. Um, put up the 43 last night. No reason to suspect he couldn't do that again. I'm happy with a three. Uh, Bender's price is up a little bit. He's 4,100 on FanDuel, so they brought him up from, was he 3,800 yesterday? Yep, 3,800. Uh, so Bender is a four and GPP only. Josh Jackson, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Uh, I'm going to say that he is a four. And Alex Len at 4,500 is a two. Um, he's a three on DraftKings. 5,100 is not really that exciting. But he's going to play a ton of minutes. Like he played 24 last night. I think that's the low end. Um, I've got him in for 26 tonight, but he's just, he should be a thousand dollars more expensive and he's just not, and that's fine. Um, he's going to be very highly owned again. We'll go to Portland now. Uh, Blazers 114 implied total is second. They obviously have, um, by far the best defensive matchup on the slate. So... We do want to pay attention here. Um, Dame at 9,700 on FanDuel, 9,800 on DK. Oh, the carbonation of this is killing me. They were all relatively balanced uh, last night. But, you know, you would expect one of these two idiots to go off. I feel like it's more of a Dame night than uh, a CJ night. You would need 50 at a Dame. I'm going to say that Dame is just a 3. I'm not wild about it. And um, I'm going to say CJ is a 4. I don't really love it. Uh, Aminu down to 4,900 is kind of exciting. I wish that the Suns were... Well, he could get lost on rotations. I'm going to say Aminu's actually a 3 on uh, FanDuel, 4 on DK. I'm hoping some uh, defensive miscommunications lead to some Alpha Aminu open 3 looks. Uh, Harkless, you know, I'd be okay with him as a flyer, but you need, like last night he put up 32, um, but he's all over the board. He's a GPP only guy. Nurkic, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. He had 33 last night, 40 in his previous game. Um, it's not totally for me. I'll say he's a four. And I don't think there's anything else I would want. So we can go to Utah. Uh, Jazz, 106.5 implied total is eighth. They are eight-point favorites at home against the Mavs. Uh, not the best out of Mitchell last night. Gobert went pretty, pretty hard in the paint. Other than that, um, uh, the rest of the Jazz were quiet. Not really a great spot here. Um, if you're Don, if you want Donovan Mitchell, I would get it. But 7,700 on Fanduel, 8,000 on DK. Uh, you're looking for 40. Uh, he's a four for me on FanDuel. I wouldn't have him on DK. I don't... Well, that that's probably too aggressive. He's a three for me on FanDuel and a four for me on DK. He can go off. Um, I'm anxious to see how he looks against Dennis Smith. Rudy Gobert, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. He needs 40. Yeah, he's just a straight three for me. Uh, I don't want any Joe Ingles. Derek Favors at 6,100 is a four. That's not how you spell Favors. Um, I don't want Crowder, and Rubio is way too expensive. So let's go to Dallas. 
Look, everything is going to be happening in these two games. Well, these three games, basically. They're going to be stacked out the ass. Dallas, uh, eight-point dogs on the road in Utah. Going to be a tough one for them. Oh, uh, boy. Wow, I don't really like anything here. I'm going to be able to make this super simple. These four guys are just straight fours. I could see having very minimal exposure to all of them. But it's a bad matchup. They're all priced in like a similar group. Um, I don't expect anything crazy from them. And they're the Mavs. They're in a little bit of a disarray as a franchise. I, I just... It's hard to get excited there. Nothing stands out. Finally, for the DK peeps here, we'll take a look at Kings-Lakers. This game does not exist to FanDuel, guys. Um, so the furthest down I would go is probably Scal. Fuck. Oh, that actually worked. Okay, so Bogdan is 5,100 on DK. Um... Oh, uh, Kings 110.25 implied total, which would be sixth of the whole slate. Uh, one point underdogs at home against the Lakers. Uh, Bogdan, easy three for me. Um, it's really not a bad spot. If Darren Fox plays, I think he's a four. I do want to see the, the Fox ball matchup. Justin Jackson would be a four. Willie Colley Stein at 6,200, I like a lot. Um, you know, Lakers are pretty bad against centers. And, uh, you know, Willie only needs 36 to hit 6x. Um, you know, he got to 37 right before the break. Can get into the 30s. I think that's a good spot for him. I need to put DK caveats on all of this. But the guy that I like the most, surprise, surprise, is Scal. Uh, Scal is 4,600 on DraftKings. Um, so 6x would be like 27 or so. Um, you know, he had 19 in his first game back, but he's way underpriced. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a 3. I don't want to go too crazy because it's the Kings. And finally, we got the Lakers. <sighs> I think we're at a point now where um, we can't trust my numbers on Isaiah. He had 29 last night, which I guess is okay. I mean, that's right on value, but he is not the same person. He just physically looks so different. Not that we didn't already know that. So that's about as far as I want to go here. Plus Brook. So KCP... Oh yeah, we're probably not even going to see... We don't, we're not going to see Lonzo today crazy uh kcp 5500 on dk um i mean if he's going to be bombing threes that's a really good spot to do it i'm going to say he's a three uh, i'm going to say that brandon ingram is a four 6200 is not my favorite price did have a monster game in 29 minutes last night um and has been playing a lot better lately but let's see how much better he is with lonzo off the floor So when Lonzo didn't play, Randall goes ham. Ingram actually better with Lonzo on the floor. Okay, so I'm fine with a four there. Uh, Isaiah's going to be a straight three. He's 5,800. Uh, his performance last night would put him right at 5x. So, you know, the king, he probably hates the kings. I don't have a problem with it. Randall a four and Brooke Lopez a four. Both just value plays. Randall went nuts last night. 45. Um, he's 7,400, so that would be a nice 6x performance if he did it again. And the Kings aren't much of a matchup. Sorry, I rolled through that pretty quick, but, you know, it's Lakers-Kings on a site that I'm not playing on. There's stuff to like there, but really, Warriors-Thunder, Wolves-Bulls, Suns-Blazers, that's, that's where the bread is buttered. You can almost ignore those first couple games. So, let's dump everything in here right now. Um, 
change that, set that to 10. And let's grab some projections here. Let's see what pops up on FanDuel. A lot of bee jelly if I had to guess. No live stream tonight. Try to avoid that on the weekends. Can never trust where I'm gonna be. So let's set that to the main slate. There we go. We'll do a hundred. Let's roll. Yeah, that looks like it makes sense. <laughs> Tons of B Jelly, tons of Alex Lynn, tons of Russ, a lot of Durant, Jamal Crawford, Mello, Wiggins. This is all stuff we already know. Dunn and Portis. Yeah, I'm going to have so much of that game, it's insane, but I'm not going to be in the minority. You know, if you go B Jelly and Russ and Lynn, you know, you can go to Wiggins. Um, I'd be fine with Portis. There's a lot to like in here. So there's a there's a big stack of lineups for everybody. Check DK. It's gonna look a little bit different. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Advanced options, change all 10 random, and just the main slate. So drop off that Philly Orlando game and go. Yeah, a lot of B jelly. Way more Portis than I would have expected, but that's kind of crazy. And campaign, uh, minimum salary. Did I ignore that too much? Take a look. Yeah, I just I glanced over him because I didn't think that he would be minimum salary. Um, still just a four for me because I think he sucks. But uh, he should be looked at at least a little bit if you need a punt in a GPP. But yeah, if you go B. Jelly, Portis, um, you know, Russ, if you want to force Isaiah, I, I think that's reasonable. I would want to look at Scal. So, you know, you can go... Something like that looks really good. Russ, Crawford, Durant, Portis, Len, Thomas, Scal, B. Jelly. I'd be fine there. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, I'll tweet out uh, some of my exposures later tonight. I'm, uh, I've am i max entered the $7.77 uh, GPP tonight. So we're going to go uh, pretty crazy into the shop machine. So I'll keep you guys up to date on that. I should be up um, watching some basketball tonight. Ooh, somebody just scored for Liverpool. Who was it? Emery Chan. It's a perfect way to uh, to sign off of this um, video for today. one nothing Liverpool. Suck at West Ham. Good luck tonight, and I'm out.